For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In today's video review, we're gonna be sinking our teeth, chainsaw teeth that is, into the new 3-0, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one six scale collectible figure of Leatherface. To get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is measure off Leatherface. Now, I'm not really technically counting his hair because really you could slick that hair back. I'm just opting to uh, tap the hair a little messier as it is in the film. So I'm going to only go to the top of his mask. Now, going to the top of Leatherface's mask, let me just hold the button right there. There we go. From his shoes to the very top of his leathered face, the figure stands 12.4 inches in height. Let me switch that over to centimeters because I'm sure somebody will want to see that in centimeters. 31.6 centimeters tall is Leatherface. One thing I've already done is I've gone ahead and put the apron on. When you get him out of packaging, actually the apron has to be added to him. You have to dress him up and similar to a regular apron, just tie it. I just tied it very loosely on the back. We can pull it off just for the time being and I'm going to put that just to the side so we can have a look at how he looks out of packaging. Immediately, what you're treated to is a rather dirtied looking fellow. He's wearing a short sleeve, lightly striped white shirt. Rather dirty also, in fact, and he also has his trademark decorative tie. Also sporting a pair of blue slacks. And he's also, let me just bring the pants up, a rather high pair of cowboy boots, which have also been weathered and dirtied to the same degree that we've seen with, say, previous instances, previous 3-0 releases, say, for example, like Michael Myers, also had a little bit of that dirt on him. Um, the cowboy boots are nice. They do limit a little bit of the posability. I'll talk a little bit about that later on when we get into the posability of the figure. Uh, underneath, by the way, if we just lift the pant leg up, it's Ingenious how they've done that. Of course, a traditional buck body, a regular six scale three zero body is underneath there. But because they've given him baggy pants 
And specifically, let me just pull the pant leg back down. Right here, they've added extra padding. The padding almost stops like a pair of shorts. Further past this point is just the regular six scale leg. But because they've added padding right here, it inadvertently, I guess deliberately, has filled out the leg, the pant leg. It makes, it look, makes him look a little bulkier than what he actually is underneath all that. As for his torso, you can probably already see it too. They've added an additional pillow of padding. There's a lot of peas for you right in the torso area. As a result, he's much more padded than, say, the likes of Fox Mulder or some of the other 3-0 re releases that we looked at on this channel. One thing, though, and I'm just going to bring the sleeves up, they've opted to give him the rubberized skin over top of his existing arms. I know this may turn away some people. I'm perfectly actually fine with the idea of a skin layer, providing it doesn't split. Uh, so far from the handling I've done of the figure, you can bend the arms pretty easily. Um, they've also done this also with the uh, Daryl Dixon, a figure that we've also had a look at on this channel as well. The skin, the skin over top of it doesn't bother me too, too much. They've airbrushed it rather nicely to give it the same, same coloring as what he gets for the full plastic hands. He gets a little bit of veins. I say a little bit. He actually gets a considerable amount of veins running through his arms, through his biceps. He's got a fair bit of blood happening on his arms as well. Not only has 3-0 given him a functional belt, something that you could undo if you wanted to, even though he doesn't really have any other clothing to change to, but they've also given him functional pockets, a small feet. Uh, certainly for a small figure like this, they've even given him back pockets that work as well. I do find that the pants, for one reason or another, seem to be a magnet for hairs, but I guess that would add to the overall dirt and just grime that these this uh, characters would have this outfit would have certainly gotten in the course of the movie it's got a lot of dirt and kind of wear on the back of his pants as well there's certainly not the most pristine of clothing some of the dirtiest actually that 30 has done to their six scale figures if you look at there's very few patches of relatively unscathed fabric all of which have kind of just been brushed with this kind of dry brushing of black paint almost almost as if they probably just taken like a, a very soft bristled brush and just kind of added some additional black there just kind of dirty up soil up the shirt if you will i mean you could obviously put him just with a shirt just with the tie just with the slacks but i think the icing on the cake is of course adding the the apron the apron that he's made famous for having uh, certainly in the first film splattered splattered generously here with different versions of blood, different types of blood. Generally, they've airbrushed this area here in kind of just a rouge of red. And then they've also speckled, as you can see, some additional red here. I like the contrast because it looks like there's various different gradings of how much the blood is dried. Some of the blood probably is not the same as the others. And this is the back here is probably just what has stained the apron for the numbers, numerous kills that he's had. So we're going to go ahead, and by the way, actually, just before I put it on him, I want to show you the type of material that it is. The one side almost kind of looks like a canvas. On the front side, however, it's been given like a slicker, almost plastic feel to it. Uh, it's got some nice sort of uh, parchment-colored staining here, some nice little uh, beiges and golds and stuff like that added to it. It kind of looks like a little like parchment paper if you ever made parchment paper in school. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to slide that over his head. You don't have to be overly careful because after all, you're not worried about necessarily messing up his hair. Um, you can tuck it underneath his collar and you can sort of adjust this after the fact. We'll flip it around. Draw no attention, of course, to the way I'm tying this. I'm just tying this for the time being in this way. I'm just going to make some bunny ears. Yes, that's actually how I tie my shoes. Still relying on the bunny ears system. Hey, it works. And uh, there's the tie off on the back there. Now, once you have that in place, you can kind of bring that down. I want to bring that underneath the collar, for example, so that the collar is peeking over tip, just to give it a little bit of extra depth. And then from there, I can adjust the tie depending on how I want that. You can also a little bit tuck down the shirt collar so that you see a little bit more visibility of the lower part of his mask. Normally it would have been concealed over if you've got the color too high. I like to bring it down just a little bit so we can get some more details here of this glorious mask showing. Obviously you guys are gonna to wanna to see Leatherface's face 
And though, much like in the movie, you don't really actually see his real face, what you do see, however, is two glaring eyes looking right at you. Well, not quite right at you. In fact, actually, if you're looking at the eyes, the eyes are angled up. He's looking up rather than he's looking down. I guess, in a way, it's good that there's sort of a lost look on his face. I would have preferred, though, if the eyes were still a little bit lower. I think they, they rest a little too high. At least his vision looks a little too high. The beauty, at least, is because the eyes are so sunken far back there in the mask, the sockets of the mask darken the eyes to enough, just enough of a degree that you really only get a little bit of light hitting the side of the eyeballs just to kind of make it look like there's actually life behind the mask. Of course, we get his mouth featured down below. We also have some wiring added to the side as well. It's something I didn't realize was there. I'd have to go back and again watch the film. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a dead-on likeness, but it's sort of an inspired likeness in the same vein that the Halloween Curse of Michael Myers was. It looks enough like he does in the film, but I can see that they... It looks like they've changed just a few things to it. Like his face seems a little squatter than longer. I do think that the head sculpt is quite good though. You see all the stitch work running around the side area here. Imagining, if you will, that somebody would have crafted this mask crudely and yet still quite well actually from various different leathers. You can see the re remaining amounts of ear on the side. And once again, I like to have the collar a little bit further down so you can see the little wrinkles and the strapping in which he would have attached the mask to his face. The discoloration of the uh, the mask here, the leather of the mask, is accurate to how it looks in the film. I keep sort of wanting to go back and I resist the urge and yet I still continue to do it, wanting to play with his hair. His hair is very much similar to what we got with the Michael Myers your style and way of displaying it certainly will vary perhaps than, than mine. I guess you could add a little bit of product in there as well. But I think the hair is pretty decent. It's full feeling hair. In fact, moving it around, I don't see any bald spots whatsoever. Now they could have easily gone and rooted this in a plastic, plastic hair. But I think for a mask like this, real hair is really the best way you could have gone. But if you like look at it, there's no patches whatsoever on here. Other companies doing six scale figures, even like the female figures that usually use real hair, there's those awkward moments where you lift the hair up and you can see a bald spot right underneath there. As I continue to lift and move this out of the way, there's no bald spots whatsoever happening in Leatherface's hair. And I'm sure he's appreciating for the fact that I keep messing around with his hair. Just leave it alone already. I really do like the head sculpt very much. I'd love to see them also do future Texas Chainsaw Massacres. And it's unfortunately so, sort of probably the same problem that they have with their Halloween license. They probably have licenses for certain films. Maybe they may not be able to do all of them, but seeing how good they've done here with Leatherfaces, there I go, keep playing with his hair again. Seeing as how well they've done with this Leatherface, I'd love to see them do like a part two, a part three, and even an ill-fated, many people would disagree, and even part four, Next Generation, which is one of my favorite uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. I know, I know. Um, again, love the discoloration. Got a little dents and scratches all in there. Um, also, you can see how the lips have been pried away. That's a really nice also extra touch. Imagining that that would be somebody's, well, the around the area of their lips. And then you can see again the deformed face, the deformed mouth that is, of Leatherface peeking out from underneath. For the figure's accessories, unfortunately he doesn't come with a display stand, but that's easily remedied. You can either just have him standing, which he stands fine on his own, or you could source out just a black oval shaped base quite easy to come by online like ebay for example i've been tempted to actually pick up a bunch of those for some of the figures that didn't include display stands just so that the figures look consistent to one another so even though he doesn't come with necessarily a display stand he comes with what i think are necessary uh tools of the trade if you will for leatherface of course the primary the one that most people will likely display him with is his trusty yellow chainsaw the chainsaw not only has wear and tear to it, it has age that they've painted on meticulously to the sides and to the back handle areas. 
you can see there is the draw cord there to start the motor there's the fan on the side little switches little dials and little levers and of course the handle in which he's going to be holding it from there's the side supporting handle and the little gasoline uh, gas tank cap featured on the front there the blood has been uh, meticulously but not overly saturated on the blade it's been splattered here but you can see that he's probably slashed his way and then he's had moments for the blood to kind of run off the blades I guess if you wanted to you could go back in there and you can add some additional blood if you really wanted to I think it's got just the right amount of blood it doesn't necessarily have to be at excess but I think he's got just the right amount you can so, sort of see they just have kind of randomly placed areas of blood I guess again you could add some a thicker layer of blood down below but overall I'm pretty happy with what they've done here uh, the blades if you can hopefully see it are all individually well not individually linked but the sculpting certainly would show as if these are things that would be linked together and potentially something that could move around uh, the chainsaw looks great I'm don't have any complaints I can make to the chainsaw whatsoever but he does have more I know you're like hold on a second he's got a chainsaw that's all I really need now hold on a second Jack he's got more than that one thing he also has is a meat hook now the meat hook pleasantly surprised is metal I didn't realize it was metal I figured it would be plastic and I thought I really hope it's not plastic part of me kind of just had wish had wished that this could be a metal and I'm sure at the time that I ordered Leatherface I knew that this was metal but time had allotted when he eventually was delivered and uh, pleasantly again surprised once again that this is metal it's really the best way to go as we change mediums he does come included with a plastic mallet as you can see some blood has been added to it but not recent blood I guess the same thing really for the chainsaw it doesn't look like it's recent blood it looks like it's been blood and it's dried and maybe perhaps he's picking it up again to you know you know yeah the handle is done here in almost a very dark wood brown and then the top of the hammer has been done in like a gunmetal gray it's got just the right bit of texturing to it to convey the sense that it is metal but I assure you that the accessory is plastic as we move further into the realm of his accessories and I suppose really wrapping up the end of his accessories he also comes with several different interchangeable hands now currently I tried to remember to put on the defaulted hands which are essentially just a pair of relaxed hands relaxed palms but he does also have like a gripping hand which I guess would be adequate for holding the chainsaw handle for example then he's also kind of got just a series of gripping hands a total of three of various openings here some smaller than others and some suited better for say the meat hook over for example the mallet to change out the hands uh, one problem I did have with the figure is taking the hands out and it's nothing really for three zero but I did find like for example the I'm just gonna give him a stand here properly I did find like the peg right here popped off very easily I guess maybe the socket opening here is a little bigger so that when you are taking it out there's really not enough holding it back that it goes with it one of the tricks of the trade that I like to use there's a pair of pliers when I generally do reviews for six scale figures I like to keep readily at the side here just a pair of pliers so if I ever want to take the pegs out it's a lot easier actually just to grab the end of it and just pop the hand right off and while I'm still at that I can then go ahead and find the hand that I want to use let's say for example this one and I'm just gonna wiggle it back onto the peg easy peasy lemon squeezy and then we can go ahead and just put it back into the socket I do actually find also that when you are putting the hands around the chainsaw something I want to show you here uh, the hands are very close gripped and again that varies from hand to hand I found actually it was a lot easier to pry the hand apart like that when I was putting it around the handle uh, being that the handle of the chainsaw here was plastic certainly at the very least the last thing I would want is for that to break so instead I'm just kind of prying the fingers away from one another so I can then properly get it around the handle and once you do that you can do it on the other side and you get Leatherface to hold and wield his mighty chainsaw 
when the time comes to display this maniac, I would almost feel as if he was naked without his chainsaw in his hand. And like I said, it's fairly easy to get it in his hand if you just do a little bit of prying on the fingers. Despite for the fact that he does have the skin over top of his existing joints, um, you can still move his arm fairly easy up to even the point where if you just do it very slowly, I was even able to get the chainsaw over top of his head, sort of like he's swinging it around, one of the potential options that you can have when displaying the figure. The joints are just secure enough encased in that skin, but the flexibility on them is just as good as other six scale figure releases that don't have the skin over top of them. When it comes to the figure's articulation, so let me just show you here, his head rotates all the way around. Uh, if we lift the collar away, you can see he's also got an undershirt. There is what looks to be a secondary ball joint. Now the ball joint is encased, if you can see it or not, but the neck also has that rubbery skin over top of the joint. Um, so the head does rotate all the way around. It hinges up and down. It hinges back and forth. But then you've got a secondary, what looks to be a ball joint. It might not actually be one, but it feels like there's a secondary ball joint right in there. Uh, maybe potentially giving you the extra hinge uh, on the neck there. The arms hinge out. And don't be alarmed that while you are doing this, you sort of hear ratcheted joints. Um, it seems so far from what I have played around with the figure, but the, the figure is um, forgiving of posability. Like when you are moving the arms, it doesn't feel like there's that resistance point where you have to kind of stop and you have to kind of rethink your options thinking that maybe you're bending them too much. So far again, from what I've done with it, it seems like they're pretty generous with what you can do with them. Um, so they do ratchet in and out, uh, forward and back. If we just move the sleeve up once again, you can see there's the hinge in the elbow and the elbow gives you almost about a 90 degree angle. The hands rotate all the way around. They hinge back and forth just by the nature of the way that the pin is. Sort of like a dual halved, like a two halved cap that are swinging against one another that allows the hinge to go this way. Uh, the only thing I did find with the figure though, I'm just bring his arms back down. There we go. Uh, is that his, uh, because he's got so much padding here, it's not the easiest to get any sort of ab crunch happening or a waist swivel. He's sort of kind of encapsulated inside his padding to really limit any bit of posability there. Um, his legs just split out. And let me just move the apron out of the way so you can see. The eight legs split out. You can move them forward. You can move them back to about there. They're seeming like they, they, again, you've got the padding right here that seems to almost limit bringing the legs further back. Luckily though, he does have still the double hinge on the knee. Um, and then when we get to his, his boots, now his boots rotate all the way around. You can hinge him up, you can hinge him down. There's a little bit of give there, just a little bit. It's not to say really that you would need him in a running pose. Running poses certainly would have to support a display stand. I guess really for what you need him to be, if you are just displaying him, say for example, more like arm movement than leg movement, then I think he has necessary articulation in the lower half. It's sort of limited a little bit because when you're trying to move the legs back and forth, there's like padding, very obvious padding at the top of the thighs that sort of detracts, sort of limits what you can do there. But the rest of the figure is just as poseable again as any of the other 3-0 releases. The 3-0 Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface 1-6 scale figure for me was a 2018 must-have. Ironically enough, I had placed the order and by the time he arrived, it was only a couple of days before the new year. So even though he was a must-have for me in 2018, ironically enough, we're looking at him in 2019. It's not the first time that 3-0 has released a horror-themed character. Having already handled the Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth, a Pinhead, and also, of course, the Halloween 6 Michael Myers. One of the few times that we did get a Michael Myers in six-scale form, if you exclude the ones that we were getting from Sideshow Collectibles so many years ago. Um, over the course of years, we have gotten ourselves six-scale figure releases of Leatherface. Of course, I think it goes without saying the more recent the figure, the better the likeness. And I think 3-0 has had a good handle on so far the likenesses to the characters that they've released. Leatherface has never looked better, and I definitely think he's a replacement to some of the older ones that you may already have in your collection. 
He's well detailed, and even though he doesn't have a whole lot of accessories, I think he has the crucial accessories for displaying him, especially the chainsaw, which is going to be my go-to weapon when I have him displayed on the shelf, along with the pinhead and along with Michael Myers. Some good news, though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, if he was a must-have for 2018, but maybe you were even on the fence. I don't, I don't know if I should still pick this guy up or not. Hopefully, this review has convinced you. Uh, but good news, though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, a lot of online sites are still stocking this guy. So if you guys want to pick him up, uh, he should be still readily available. As I've probably mentioned already in previous reviews for 3.0 as well, 3.0's price points on these guys couldn't be any sweeter. Not only do you get a really bang on likeness to Leatherface, but the price point won't throw your wallet in a dither. Yes, I said in a dither. The, uh, the price point on these guys are usually a little over $200, which is uh, quite actually reasonable compared to some of the other six scale figure companies that are doing similar, if not even at times lesser of a quality of sculpt at a much more expensive price. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface, like I said, it will just be a little over $200. I think that was what I ended up paying for this guy. I wanted to say he was like $219, $220, and of course a little bit of uh, exchange rate and shipping on top of that. So it was a little bit more than that as well. Either way though, fantastic, fantastic figure. Uh, I hope anybody who is a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, specifically Leatherface, of course, of being their favorite horror character, I hope they'll want to pick this one up and add them to your collection because i got to say, I'm really happy with what they've done here for them. Uh, today, once again, we were having a look at the 3-0 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This was the Leatherface 1-6 scale collectible figure. If you want to go back and have a look at some of my other 3-0 reviews, there's a whole playlist just for 3-0, which if you you could believe it there's a whole playlist right there if you're also new to this channel for 2019 let me know down below i always like meeting new viewers who are checking out the stuff that i'm posting all the stuff that i'm churning out on a regular basis rest assured for new viewers to this channel there's going to be a whole lot of content coming to this channel in 2019 so if you think i've done a lot so far just wait until you see what i've got in store for 2019 as always guys thanks for watching as you always do and I'll see you next time.